I love being a pastor. You get to walk with people in the best of times and the worst of times. And over the years, I have dealt with all sorts of people in all sorts of circumstances. And my joy has been to give them a sense of hope. Every Christmas, we would do what was called Festival of Light. For me, Christmas was really the most exciting time of the year. It was family and friends and gifts and trees and mangers. But most of all, Christmas was about hope, joy, and peace. It was uplifting and exciting. But that was the Christmas I learned I was dying. I thought this will be my last Christmas. I didn't want to show up at the festival. I didn't want to see people, be around people, asking me how I was doing. I didn't want to go. I wanted to sit home alone. My wife said, you need to go. People need to hear what you have to say. ALS, or Lou Gehrig's disease, is a degenerative disease, which means it gets worse and worse. Eventually, it affects swallowing, chewing, breathing, and when the lungs go, you end up dying. They don't know what causes it, and there's no cure. Basically, they said, you have two to five years to live. My wife has become the hands in my life when my hands don't work right. I wanted to see my daughter get married, walk her down the aisle, wanted to watch my grandkids grow up. I've been around people with feeding tubes and ventilators, and whenever I see someone like that, I'm seeing a reflection of my own future. When you're told you're dying and the process of dying is awful, there's not much hope in that.
I didn't want to show up at the festival. And my wife said, you have to go. So I got in my truck. I was driving and my phone rang and it was Billy. Billy has more stuff wrong with him than most people I've ever met. For over 20 years, he was addicted to heroin. He's HIV positive. He has hepatitis B. He's been through cancer, but he's still alive. We talked and I was telling him all that was going on. And he has kind of a high-pitched New York accent. He said, hey, you need to be a Yogi Berra Christian. And I'm thinking, what? I had no clue, no clue what he was talking about. He's a tad off the wall, to say the least. <laughs> so I asked him, what do you mean? He said, it ain't over till it's over. Billy has the worst of the worst. His wife died in his arms. His son he has never found to this day. And in spite of all of that, he's hopeful. Every human being knows they're going to die. The difference is I feel it with every twitch in my muscles. I feel it in the depths of my being. And I realized that I was really dying because I had given up. I had considered my life as over. But it wasn't. The doctors gave me two to five years. That was over 10 years ago. If I'd given up and laid down to die, I would have missed walking my daughter down the aisle. I would have missed the birth of all five grandchildren. I would say Billy's phone call was God speaking to me with a New York accent. Billy, of all people, should have considered his life over. And he was saying, it ain't over till it's over. <laughs> and I realize there is profound truth in that. I can't do the New York accent. <laughs> <like him. That's> <laughs> I didn't expect another Christmas. And now I've had 10. And the more I have, the more I want. I have my life to share, my own story to share. One day it will be over, but it's not about how long I have left. It's about how I spend the time I do have.